Joining us now to discuss this story and other issues of national security import, our friend General Michael Hayden, the former director of the NSA and the CIA. General Hayden, it's good to have you back on America's Forum. Oh, thank you, J.D. So w what do you make of Snowden resurfacing in such a high-profile way on NBC News? What's his agenda? Well, I was struck by the word you used to describe the show last night, interview. Um, boy, if it was an interview, it surely wasn't a very aggressive one. I had a ton of follow-on questions that I thought Brian Williams should have asked. It was more a platform uh, for Snowden uh, to say what he wanted to say uh, about issues he wanted to talk about. He refused to discuss some things that Williams did indeed indeed raise. So I, I, I think this is, this is part of a, a broad campaign by Snowden and his supporters. One, to be, to be fair, to explain his position, uh, but, but number two, I think, to justify what he's done. And from my point of view, what he's done has been tremendously harmful. Well, General Hayden, John Bachman here, and I want to see if you could kind of set the record straight for us a little bit in response to some of the things uh, Snowden said during the interview last night. We have a couple clips queued up, and I want to play one of them real quickly for you, and on the other side, we'll get your reaction to it. Let's go ahead and play that. Okay. I'd say, can you show that? Is there any demonstration? Because I've been asking the United States, the press has been asking the United States government uh, for a year now, if after a year they can't show a single individual who's been harmed in any way by this reporting, is it really so grave? Is it really so serious? And can we really trust those claims without scrutinizing them? I'd argue that we can't, uh, but we should be open to it. It's fair. The possibility exists. And if this has caused some serious harm, I personally would like to know about it. All right, General, get, uh, give us your take on what Snowden said right there. Well, if one be half believes his self-inflated resume about being such a, an intelligence expert, then he would realize that you never go public with the specifics about how a leak of information has harmed you. Otherwise, you increase the amount of harm. What does he want us to do? Does he want the intelligence community to go out there and say, let me give you a list of the terrorists we're no longer intercepting communications from? I mean, is that how you show harm? You've had the leadership of the two intelligence committees, both houses, both parties, people who actually do get to see this stuff, come out and quite forcefully say there has been great harm done and the United States has lost coverage of legitimate intelligence targets because of what he has done. And let me end where I began. If he's such the all fired intelligence expert he claims to be, he'd know that. And I also want you to get your reaction to what he said about his relationship at Russia, which he says doesn't exist, or with President Vladimir Putin. We also have a clip of what Snowden said about that. Let's take that clip. So I have no relationship with the Russian government at all. I'm, I've never met uh, the Russian president. Um, I'm not supported by the Russian government. I'm not taking money from the Russian government. I'm not a spy. All right, so he, he says he's a spy one day, kind of a spy. Then he says he's not a spy with relationship to the Russians here. But General Hayden, uh, your take on that. We know he's in Russia. We know that Stuart talked about uh, escaping from Russia to Cuba. How are we supposed to believe that he doesn't have any relationship with the Russian government? Well, look. He probably believes it, and let's just accept it at face value. But now let, let's parse out his claim that he has never met anyone with the Russian government. So I ask you now, John, has he met any Russians? And if he has met Russians, how can he be so all-fired sure he has not met people from the Russian government? In fact, I'm willing to kind of state with medium to high confidence, he indeed has met people from the Russian government. He just doesn't know they're from the Russian government. And as far as never meeting President Putin, I do wish Williams would have asked a follow-on question. But you appeared on a Vladimir Putin infomercial. Exactly. You came up on the screen and asked him a softball question. Do you count that as meeting? And oh, by the way, was that your idea? Or did someone suggest that to you? Who arranged that to happen? Well, I mean, that's the that's question we'll have to ask, General. What were the preconditions of this interview? I just want to drill down a little bit, uh, General, on your scenario. In other words, you're saying, for all intents and purposes, it's safe to assume that, that Snowden's in the situation where he is controlled, basically, by Russian intelligence. Virtually everyone he comes in contact with could be part of their intelligence apparatus, correct? J.D., 
probably a bridge too far. I wouldn't I wouldn't okay. say that. I wouldn't say that he was under control. But for him to make the blanket statement he has never met anyone from the Russian government, I, I think is incredibly naive. Look, if he were if, if he were in exile and having a state of asylum, even in a Western democracy, a prudent step on the part of the security services of that Western democracy would be to keep an eye on a guy of this character, of this stature. And what are we to, to think? That the Russians aren't doing that? Yeah, let's not forget, two guys, that he spent a long period of time in that airport in Moscow to negotiate the terms of his, of his asylum. How could he not talk to a Russian official? Yep, well, yes. that, that's certainly true. Uh, General, we're going to move to another topic, and that would be President Obama and the foreign policy agenda of this administration and therefore the country. Yesterday, our president spoke to the commencement uh, services at West Point, and during that speech, he fought to silence his critics. Here's what he said about the Obama foreign policy. But to say that we have an interest in pursuing peace and freedom beyond our borders is not to say that every problem has a military solution. Since World War II, some of our most costly mistakes came not from our restraint, but from our willingness to rush into military adventures without thinking through the consequences, without building international support and legitimacy for our action, without leveling with the American people about the sacrifices required. General, I hear this, and to my ear, it sounds like our Commander-in-Chief is in full lecture mode engaging in revisionist history. Is that a fair assessment? Well, uh, Elliot Abrams, an old friend of mine from the National Security Council staff, had a one wonderful comment on the president's speech at West Point yesterday. He said there were more straw men in evidence than, than there were graduating cadets. Um, he, I mean, who out there is claiming that every problem has a military solution? No, no one's claiming that. And for, for him to say that's the other side of the argument, uh, I, why would he do that? Let's have a mature discussion. It, it is a fair argument to make that we have not been active enough. I was struck by another part of the speech, J.D. and John, where he seemed to take a victory lap for his policy towards the Ukraine. Uh, oh, certainly. You need to ask the Ukrainians about that, and particularly ask the Ukrainians living in the Crimea whether we're entitled to a victory lap. And the Ukrainian troops that were shot down by the uh, pro-Russian militants uh, just over overnight last night, too. Which, which leads us to the Ukrainian situation now, General. You've been on top of crises both in uniform and leading our intelligence services. Your take on what is transpiring now in the Ukraine? Well, I think it was very predictable that, that Putin, for, for a lot of reasons, most of them domestic, uh, couldn't let stand what was happening after he left Sochi after the Winter Olympic Games and his man Yanukovych has already fled Kiev. Very predictable that he would go after the Crimea and just as a professional he did that in a very skillful bloodless way. Uh, I also think Putin understands to try to bite off more of the Ukraine physically would be very very dangerous and so I think he's actually kind of moved back from the abyss over the last two or three weeks and that that is good news, and frankly, that is a bit of success for American policy because we've become a bit more forceful in supporting the Ukrainian government. Uh, I think we've got to be very forceful in supporting the new government in Kiev with, with the new president and, and give them all the assistance we in the West can muster to create a functioning government. And, and, and once we have done that, uh, I, I think we'll be on the road to, to stability there. General Michael Hayden, we appreciate those insights, and we look forward to more of our discussion with you in a few minutes. And uh, the general, very gracious with his time today. John, when we come back later in the program, we're going to hear the general's assessment of a new Iranian cyber scam 
reaching out and contacting senior U.S. officials who apparently have succumbed to give over their sensitive contact information. Gosh, when I worked in local news, I did too many stories about senior citizens who were convinced in giving up their contact information, their money. Uh, it's certainly an interesting story, and I can't wait for your take on that. But also interesting to hear General Hayden say that Edward Snowden personally believes that he has not contacted any Russian officials, but certainly you have to believe that he would be under some sort of surveillance. Incredibly naive, as the general said. I think yeah. that might be a great way to put it. The general is remarkably skilled at getting his point of view across in a clear and cogent manner. And we just heard his review of what went on during that interview with Brian Williams and Mr. Snowden. Well, when we come back, Pete Hoekstra and Jim Robbins, Senior Fellow of National Security Affairs at the American Foreign Policy Council, will offer his perspective along with that of Pete. Don't go away. That review of the Snowden interview coming up next on America's Forum.